Today, I'm going to talk about what a ball joint is and how it works, which I think you'll find interesting. And then I'll mention some symptoms of a bad or failing ball joint. So, ball joints, which some people also call them spherical bearings because of their round-like shape, they are a part of your vehicle's suspension system. And all cars have two to four joints in the frontal suspension system. And some cars even have an additional two rear ball joints at the rear wheels. Some ball joints are made as a separate piece like this, while others can be integrated into the control arm assembly. For example, in a different video I made, which I'll put a link to in the description, I replaced a wishbone style control arm assembly for an all-wheel drive vehicle, which included a ball joint and other parts as a sole piece. The downside when it's integrated is that the part may be more expensive and potentially more time consuming to replace for the consumer. However, the benefit of a ball joint being fully integrated with the rest of the control arm assembly is that it can provide a more stable and secure connection between the control arm and the steering knuckle, which usually results in improved handling and performance. But it does vary depending on the type of vehicle, which is why car manufacturers make them differently with slightly different designs. Now, the purpose of a ball joint is to connect both the control arm to the steering knuckle, which allows for movement between those parts. Simply put, they are all connected pieces that make up the suspension system and all work together to provide a smooth and comfortable ride. To reiterate, ball joints have a pivoting motion, which allows the wheels to move up and down and side to side as needed, which again provide smoother movement all while supporting the massive weight of a vehicle and allowing the other parts of the suspension, such as the control arm and steering knuckle, to function. Hopefully I gave a good explanation. Please let me know in the comments. But next, I'll mention a bunch of symptoms of a bad, failing ball joint. For example, if the rubber has a cut on it, or is ripped, or you see grease coming out of it, then you know it's bad and needs to be replaced. Also. If there's a lot of play from the stud right here, then you know it's bad. This is brand new, and you can see I can't even move this stud. It's nice and stiff. Some of the other most common symptoms include clunky noises. There could be excessive vibration in the front of the vehicle. You may even have uneven wear on the front tires as a result. Your steering wheel could lean more to the left or right. You may also notice a loose and shaky steering popping noise when you start slowing down or making sharp turns. Speaking of noises, if you think you have problems with your suspension, listen for squeaking as you go over bumps and make turns. That way you can help narrow down where your problem is. There really could be a number of issues and sometimes it can be quite hard to pinpoint where the problem is. Oh, and one last thing to mention is that some ball joints have grease fittings on them and as a result require injecting grease after a period of time into the rubber boot area. However, many are maintenance free like this one, and in my opinion, that's how it should be. In other words, what's better than maintaining a part? Not having to maintain a part. For those interested in what a ball joint is composed of, I do a technical review and teardown to show every single piece inside, which is really quite interesting. That cool video is in the description and can be watched right now. So please let me know if you like this video by liking it and subscribing to this channel. Also, let me know your thoughts about this informational video in the comments or if there are any other ball joint tips that I missed that could help other viewers out. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day or night.